this video will show you how I transform this photograph from this to this using artificial intelligence engines from Luminar Neo. Stay tuned. All right, guys. So before uh, moving into the tutorial itself, I'm trying a new format. You know, I most of the time I practice and I practice and I practice before recording the videos. But this time, this time I did it like twice on this photograph. And then I want to first start by showing the edits and my thought process, and then I will reset all the adjustments and try to do it again. I hope you like it. Maybe the video is going to be uh, pretty long. So I think it's important for you guys to know my, my thought process. If you want to copy it, go ahead, do it. And if you like the video, please uh, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and share if you find, uh, you know, that you can share this with other people. So the first thing I did with this photograph, and by the way, this is not my photograph. Um, where I get most of the photograph I used to edit this from signatureedits.com, the free raw photo sections of their site. So they have tons of pictures over there that you can use to practice. And the very good thing is that all of them are in raw. Okay. So stop by and, you know, get your pictures from there or use yours. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay. So <clears throat> the first thing I did was, of course, used to develop. Um, module here. I selected this profile. I think I use uh, Adobe Standard, and then I play with the smart contrast and and then uh, fix the the color. I started with uh, daylight, I think, and then I readjusted to try to match the 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 white balance. I think this photograph was shot way off the white balance, maybe not set up correctly, or maybe the those curtains over there or the room itself was casting that yellow color. All right, so the other thing I did was this uh, optics correction. I let the program do the thing, okay? Now, from there, I went to the color section. The thing I did with this color section was to remove the color cast, that yellow color cast, right? Then I detected two things in here. The first one, let me, let me go zoom in here. And look, the eyes are soft. Uh, you know, everything is a little soft, not that bad, but, uh, but I think the, the impression that I have is that maybe she was about to blink when he shot or she shot the photograph and seems that she's kind of sleepy. So I know that um, the super sharp AI tool of Luminar Neo has the capability, has the power to analyze the photograph and based on I don't know what, it will figure out and rebuild some stuff. So I uh, gave a shot to Super Sharp AI to see what it does, right? Actually, in, in suggesting or correcting this uh, face, and and I did that, and this was the result. Let me go just here, and you see that you know it corrected most of the things, you know, the eyes, the shape, everything. You know, it shifted the color of her eyes, <laughs> but I think I like it that way. So then after that. Um, I went to the skin, just to soften the skin, you know, the skin was really good, but I wanted to, to add more. And then it came the, the lighting thing. If I zoom out before the studio light in the skin, you see that all this area here is really bright for her face. It's kind of shifted to the, to the right, right? You know, from the camera view. And there was not enough light hitting her face. I think that maybe it wasn't a reflector or something here just to bounce light back. So mm, this is kind of dark, in my opinion, in comparison of the, the rest of the photograph. So I tried this new tool, Studio Light, which is included in Luminar Neo now, which mimics kind of the light pattern you want to use. In other words, you have a light beam. Artificial intelligence will analyze the photograph and you know and create this light beam and give you the ability to move that light uh, beam uh, around the photograph for you to place it in the in the place or in the area you want to brighten up. And in this case, I put it uh, here, right, and then I play with adjustment. The only thing I did was to add the amount and move it here and then out of it, you know. 
out of it, I got this. So I got good light now. And then from there, just to check how it was going on, I did the vignette, right? And then I did this color uh, thing. I don't, maybe I didn't do anything on this one. I can delete it, right? Then I went to the develop over here. Let me see if I did something on the color. Yes. Maybe let me check one. Okay, over here, what I did was to actually match the tone of the face uh, skin with the arm. Check this out. And I did it with the, uh, with the white balance. And I show you how. Then I did some Dutch and Burn. This was to light up this area of the arm. Okay. And then I went back to develop again. Maybe it's other color. Nothing here, nothing in curve. So this one is not needed anymore. This one over here. Let me check on this one. Okay, over here. Okay, so this one I did kind of my own vignette, right? Uh, linear gradient to darken the corners and make her pop out. And then I did film grain. And the reason I did film grain, what grain was to, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm looking for kind of uh, iron down or soften the artificial intelligence artifacts or effects, or I don't want to call it unnatural because it's very natural, but you know, when, when you add grain, it gets more interesting and, you know, more natural in my opinion. So that's the reason I add film grain. And then I ended up adding the blur tool, which is another new tool, which I think is really great because now you have the, the ability to blur areas of the photograph, um, you know, using these three different types of blur patterns. So I did some uh, blur of the background, right? To make her even pop more. And this was the result, guys. So this is the things I did with this photograph. Um, I will save it as a preset. Straight to the point tutorial, right? 100, which is this one over here. So I can share with you guys this preset. Okay, now switching back to edit, I will reset the photograph and start doing it again, right? Okay, to reset the adjustments, I will go to the Luminar Neo menu, logo, image, and then I will do adjustments revert to original. And then we have the original photo. So I will start by cropping with the original aspect ratio, I will do this here. Okay, and then I will put it there. Very good. Boom. Now I will go to develop raw and do the standard uh, profile. We'll add some smart contrast. Over here, I will switch to daylight and uh, adjust it a little bit. You know, the way to get kind of the skin tone better when there's a lot of uh, warm tones is just to reduce the warm the temperature toward to the blue area and add some magenta right there. Let me see, always, yes. And then <clears throat> I will do the regular corrections in here. Fine, good, nothing else. That's fine. Now, mm, the eyes and the sharpness, you know, I can go tool by tool, but as, as, as you saw before, I use the Super Sharp AI. So I will click on Super Sharp AI, Universal, Face Enhancer, and click on Low and Wait. All right, so this is the result of the super sharp AI, as I said, you know, it corrected a lot. Of, I mean, there's uh, expressions, so I think it's okay. All right, now, next. I think up to here, the picture is okay, but to my liking, I want to add more stuff. And now it's time to use the studio light stuff. This uh, tool here under the portrait section, because I want to lighten up this area so i will click on studio light and maybe this tool will try to crash 
on my PC, but to see what happens. And I will put an amount of around 15 and let the tool work. Okay, you see that tool work because if I click here, you see the light pattern. And then this little dot in here is the one you can use to move the light around. I want to put it like here. Let me see. Yes. Okay. Now I will refine it. How I will use the I will erase. I don't want light in this area or any other area. You know, I want kind of this oval type of area here. So I will erase every, anything that is around that oval thing. So I will click on mask in brush erase. 65 is fine for me. Okay, bigger brush. And I will start erasing from here. Okay. Check here. Sorry for that. Let me see. Good. A little bit from here. I'm here. More from the arm. And reduce the size here. Okay. Now I like it. Good. That's the only thing I will do there. Nothing else. You know, I have the light I want. If you want more light, the only thing you have to do is crank up the amount, right? Maybe around there. 25 is fine for me. The rest of the sliders here, I'm not, you know, I will not do anything with them. But in another tutorial, when you can use this light uh, customization part, I will show you how these things work. But for now, studio light is fine for me. The tone here and here are not matching. Maybe our, I am uh, not following the same uh, uh, order that I did before, but the idea is there. So that's, that's, that's the reason I tried to explain my thought process. Now it's time for me to match this thing. And the way I will do that is using a develop mode here and go straight to the color section and go to masking, select the brush, 65, maybe I go to 70. I will paint, all right? I will paint the mask where I want that to be. Over here and there just to check right now I will start adjusting so to yellow and then I will add magenta you see how it starts to look more you know to match I will reduce the saturation a little bit there let me see yes I like it the way it is now I will go back to masking brush I will reduce the opacity I mean the strength and then I will start painting in other areas like here not that close to um, I mean through the face and the fingers over here I don't want that to affect the face okay I like it if I need to fix it or correct it I can always go back now I will add a vignette a standard one and there size this let me check them out not there uh, subject there okay I like it there okay now what else I can do in here I'm just trying to think about the things I did okay I will now I will fine-tune this area I will go back to edits go to develop go to the color section and reduce the tint a little bit and go back to tools now it's better good okay so nice uh, i think it's okay now the grain i will use the film grain an amount maybe of four roughness a little bit i like the effect of the grain right so and you can counter uh attack <laughs> in other words uh, you know the skin tone I mean the skin uh, uh, softness is cranking up this a little bit and there you go that combination that skin smoothing and the grain in my opinion looks great look we have come a long way with this photograph we think so so far it's okay now the, the blur the way I added the blur to the background was to go to masking click on mask AI 
wait for the tool to work and then select a human, right? And now go to mask and invert, all right? I want uh, the mask to be inverted. Now it's inverted, you see? If I click invert again, it goes like this, but I don't want that like that. I want it to affect only the surroundings. So I go back to the adjustment, Gaussian blur, and I apply the amount of blur I want. Now it makes the portrait more interesting, you see? But there's something here I need to correct. Maybe this area over here should be a little uh, more sharp. So I'll go to brush, erase, and a bigger brush like this. And I will start erasing from here and checking how it goes, right? You see? Oh, it looks more natural. Okay, if you still want to darken these corners in here, as I did, you can go to another develop tool, select masking, linear gradient, and put a gradient like this, like so, okay? And then go to adjustment and start, you know, reducing the opacity, okay? The same you can do with the other one on the top. If you want to use a new one, just close that, open a new one, Go to mask in linear gradient and do the same here. Go to adjustments and reduce the exposure. If the mask is not okay, apply, it, apply another one and then you go. Okay, so far so good. Now, if you want to affect the colors, for example, if you want this photograph to be a little bit more warmer, maybe you go to, you can go to develop but I will suggest to go to color and play with the saturation, right? And vibrance, you know, that way you can, you know, create an interesting look. I like warm uh, magenta type of tones like this one over here, but it's your liking, right? Okay, guys, this is the process I use to transform this photograph from this original shot to this beautiful uh, retouch done entirely in Luminar Neo. Again, guys, thank you very much for watching the video. Please like, subscribe to the channel and share. And I see you in the next straight to the point tutorials. God bless you all.